Okay, so we're here with NVIDIA and they're about to show us some benchmarks. We're very excited. The moment of truth is upon us. I'm here with Shridhar. He's with Technical Marketing with NVIDIA and he's going to show us a few things that demonstrate the power of the Tegra 4 platform. So I'll let him take it away. Sure. Hey guys, uh, all of you must have seen the benchmark results of Tegra 4 that was recently published, but many of you may be wondering whether Tegra 4 is really a low power chip. And here I have a demo to prove that Tegra 4 can, consumes really low power and can fit in uh, phones and tablets. What I have here is our Tegra 4 uh, phone development platform. Obviously, this board is really big. It's not going to fit in a phone. Mm -hmm. And the reason for, uh, for that is that it's got all these debug ports that our software engineers and our OEM partner engineers use to debug the phone to optimize it for performance and power. Mm -hmm. And I have hooked up this development board to a power meter uh, through these wires. And this power meter is basically measuring the power consumption of the phone at the battery terminal. Right now, the phone is in standby mode and it's consuming less than 10 milliwatts of power. The sensitivity of this meter is like 10, 10 milliwatt range, that's why it's showing zero. But the moment I turn on the display, uh, you'll see it'll spike up a little bit, but mm -hmm. eventually it'll settle down to around 0.7 watts. So basically when the phone is idle with the display on, it's consuming only around 0.7 watts. And most of that power consumption is due to the, you know, the display backlight power. Uh, let me unlock the screen here, and you guys can take a look at the meter. There you go, the phone is uh, sitting idle, the power is settling down, it comes, comes down to 0.7 watts in idle mode. So let me launch the gallery and play a 1080p video clip. Um, play, and start over, and tilt this board a little bit so that the video comes to landscape mm, okay. mode, and let's let the power settle down and what you'll notice is this is a 1080p screen mm. uh, the phone is decoding a 1080p high profile clip and you see it's consuming only around 0 0.88 0 0.9 watts yes. when you compare this to a computing system a 1080p phone like the droid dna for example we found that the droid dna consumes around 1.2 watts so tegra 4 is actually consuming 25 percent lower power than computing systems out there mm. and it gives you approximately two to two and a half hours more battery life so thing. you get both high performance as you've seen in the benchmarks mm -hmm. and low power from Tegra 4. Excellent. And in terms of you know the relative performance, a lot of the industry analysts from what I've read at least, they say that Tegra 4 I is not Tegra 4. Can you just speak to that a little bit? Well it is uh, it's not Tegra 4, no. but it is performance comes close to Tegra 4, it's quite close. and the uh, user experience is close to Tegra 4. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is you can play all the Tegra 4 optimized games on Tegra 4i because it's got a 60 core uh, GeForce GPU. Mm -hmm. It has the same i500 uh, modem uh, architecture in there. Uh, it supports the same computational photography features that Tegra 4 uh, supports. And it's going to deliver great web browsing, great gaming experience, and really uh, long battery life. So in all these aspects, I, I believe that you know T4i is much closer to Tegra 4 performance, mm -hmm. but ob and clearly it's uh, aimed at the mainstream smartphone market, yes. and Tegra 4 is for the you know super phone high end hero smartphone and tablet and market. Tablets, of course, yeah. you know with ridiculously high resolution. Right. I was reading that th apparently we're on the dawn of um, having 4K, 4K resolution display, uh, you know 10 inch mm -hmm. form factor. You know mm -hmm. it's not too far off. They're already getting ready for it. So. Yeah. Uh, but I mean Tegra 4 can actually support you know that resolution almost yeah the uh, tegra 4 i think we have a demo downstairs yeah. that shows tegra 4 driving a 4k tv so yeah. it can decode a 4k video flawlessly exactly and, right. uh, yeah you're very confident in saying that we can continue to increase the performance but at the same time we can get more efficient devices right and this is t technically possible you know yeah definitely because the uh, process technology is uh, you know continuously improving like mm -hmm. you know few years ago we were on 65 nanometer, right. 40 nanometer, 28 and we are going down and these process uh, technology improvements gives us you know uh, more power efficiency yes. and architecture is also getting more efficient yeah. like we went from single core to dual core and it's a well known fact more cores running in parallel mm -hmm. you know can run at lower frequency and voltage and gives you better power efficiency mm -hmm. so I think that trend will continue uh, and uh, as we provide more and more performance in these chips, people will start you know, using up this performance. I mean, if you recall a few years ago when NVIDIA introduced the first dual core mobile mm -hmm. processor, people were wondering, do you really need a dual core in a smartphone? But pretty soon everyone moved to quad core yeah, because they realized <laughs> they we need did. this more performance. And as they use these devices more often, they want to use it like their own personal computing device. And you know, Of course, and that's uh, where we're going. I was speaking with Arm last night actually, and they were saying that within two years, uh, we'll have a cool performance to what you're used to experiencing on your PC. 
Uh, could be, yes. In terms of Android and whatnot, I mean, obviously I know NVIDIA is a big supporter of Android, um, but is it true really that Android can't take full uh, advantage of this many cores? Is it, you know, are the app developers kind of sort of lagging in a, a single core instruction set mentality? Uh, not really. I know Android, as you know, was based of Linux, and yeah. Linux had support for multi-core, multi yeah. and uh, Android today supports uh, multi-core uh, mm -hmm. architectures, like uh, the operating system inherently is capable of scheduling threads across multiple cores. The web browser takes advantage of multiple cores, mm -hmm. especially the Chrome browser that yes. supports multiple tabs, uh, can mm -hmm. like schedule threads on a, for each tab on different cores. And, like, I you think know, you have a demonstration that can perhaps show something to that effect? This is a web browsing demo. What we have set up here is this is a Tegra 4 development platform, mm -hmm. and this is a Nexus 10 that is powered by dual core A15. And both these tablets are connected to a web server through you know, wired Ethernet. Okay. And the reason we are going wired and the reason we are going to a local web server that is under this desk mm -hmm. is to eliminate all the network latencies, I the understand. server load latencies, and just purely benchmark the capability of the, you know, uh, these two tablets. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to launch uh, this uh, web page load test and what this test is doing is it's basically loading up 25 websites and these 25 websites are the top 25 uh, sites that are most visited in the US. Okay. And we've ripped those sites, stored them on this local server and I'm going to launch this test on the Tegra 4 and on the Nexus 10 and as you can see Tegra 4 is really like you know Loading these fast. And the cache has been cleared? There's the cache has been cleared, okay. everything is being loaded from the server, and Stagra 4 is. This is dual like, core A15. This is dual A15. versus quad A15. Quad core A15 so. And so Tegra 4 will load these 25 pages in approximately 25 to 27 seconds, and you'll see that uh, soon. I'm selling gadget there. Yep. <laughs> So there you go, 27 seconds to load up 25 pages. That's approximately a second and a half. Well, the Nexus 10 uh, takes anywhere between 45 to 50 seconds, mm -hmm. you know, delivering a 60 to 70 percent uh, performance benefit on the quad-core uh, uh, Tegra 4. Substantial improvement. So really, when do you think we're going to be able to see uh, Tegra 4 devices in the wild? Uh, the Q2 of this year. Q2 yeah. of this year? Yeah. ZT and Toshiba already announced that yeah. they're working That's with right. us to bring uh, tablets. Uh, okay and phones to the market and uh, you'll see more uh, you know, devices uh, show up. So we're looking at 57 seconds for the mm -hmm. Nexus 10, the A15 dual core, yep. versus the 27 seconds for the quad core. It's almost uh, two times faster. And does it still have the, the fifth sort of ninja core as Jensen, yeah, the definitely. companion core? Yes. Okay. So yeah, Tegra 4 is, uh, has this uh, 4 plus 1 architecture yeah. with the fifth uh, battery saver core. That's right. Uh, so the battery saver core itself is a uh, you know Cortex A15 core, mm -hmm. but it has been optimized for ultra low power consumption. Mm -hmm. So for example, let's say right now the it's sitting idle doing nothing. Mm -hmm. So we turn off all the four main cores and That's just right. run it off the battery saver core. Mm -hmm. And if the display is turned off and you're just doing you know social network things in the background or yeah, playing music, all of that runs on the battery saver core. Nice. And the fact that on Tegra 4 the battery saver core is Cortex A15, it's mm -hmm. much more powerful, so it can handle can more. Handle a lot more, eh? Yeah, it can handle a lot more tasks in this low power state. So, and and our, you know, the 4 plus 1 technology is a second generation technology on Tegra 4, which means we get even more power saving because we have optimized the algorithms, uh, you know, further. I understand completely. Well, that's a nice thorough rundown. I'm completely sold on what you guys are bringing to market. Thank you. I really wanted to say thank you very much for your time. That's nice talking to you. Congratulations. Thank you. Nice to talk to you too. Sure. All right, it's Android Authority. We're going to sign off for today. We pulled an all-nighter last night to try and get you some videos online. We'll have lots more news on NVIDIA and lots more to come here from Mobile World Congress in Barcelona.